Hello again, everyone. I'm Mike Boucher, and welcome to Marquette University Law School's website. This is uh, online on the issues, and uh, we are talking today about the latest Marquette University Law School poll with the poll's director, Charles Franklin. Charles, great to have you with us again, and let's uh, get right to the basics here. When were we in the field, and uh, what does the sample look like this time around? We were in the field last week, May 3rd through the 7th. Uh, we talked to 811 registered voters, uh, about two thirds of those were by cell phone, one third by landline, and the margin of error is plus or minus 4.0% this month. All right. uh, also in partisanship, we're right at the long-term averages of party for Democrats and Republicans. Well, let's talk about the uh, the pandemic, uh, the COVID-19 situation. Um, we, we asked a lot of questions about that in our last poll, and we do again in this poll. And I guess what people want to know is, how are the public's attitudes now as they were a, a month ago? Are we still accepting of the some of the restraints and restrictions on our lifestyle? Have our attitudes towards that changed in any way? They are changing. There's still a strong majority that supports the safer at home distancing and measures that have been taken and the closing of schools and businesses. 69% this month say that's an appropriate reaction, but 26% say it's an overreaction. And that's a big change from a month ago in, in March when our last poll was done, when fully 86% said it was appropriate and just 10% said it was an overreaction. And where a lot of that change is coming from is there was very little polarization by party in March on this question. Over 75% of Republicans supported the shutdown in March. But now Republicans are about evenly divided on the shutdown, whether it's appropriate or not, while Democrats continue to be over 90 percent in favor of it. So, so how did people uh, in the poll, Charles, respond to this notion of whether we're reopening too soon or whether we're waiting too long to, to reopen? Yeah, 56 percent say that the, they're more concerned that we will open too soon. But now 40% say they're more concerned that we'll wait too long to reopen. Now, we didn't ask that question last time, so we can't compare. But what we did ask is, when do people think that the virus will be under control and we'll be able to, you know, get back to, to normal? In March, 71% thought we would be back to normal by August. Now that's just 38%. And in March, 20% said it would be sometime in the fall or later. Now that's 51% that think it will be fall or later. So I think you're seeing two things going on. One is people are getting more anxious and especially with parties pushing them in different directions. We're more divided on this, but the idea that we could be finished with this by, Mar by May or even August is really evaporating as people are seeing this as a much longer problem. I think uh, everyone, uh, no matter what your uh, your uh, party affiliation, I think everyone wants a sense of normalcy. But for normalcy to happen, people have to go about doing the things they always did, the things they did without thinking. So going to a restaurant or going to church or going to a department store or going to a concert or a football game or any of those things. How are people feeling about that kind of activity right now? Yeah, and this is very important as we talk about reopening stores and businesses and restaurants. You can open the door, but if the public doesn't show up, it won't restart the economy. Where we are right now is something around 45% willing to go out and do those sorts of normal things, and it varies a good bit. About 77% are willing to go to a friend or relative's home for dinner. But it falls off into the 50% range. 56% would go shopping at a mall or at a big retail store. Then it drops into the 40s that are willing to go to a worship service or go uh, to a restaurant for dinner. And finally, when we get to the big events like football or basketball or baseball games or concerts or plays drops all the way down to just 25 percent 
that are ready to do those things. So a range that seems to depend on how many people are involved, but still 50% or a little bit below that that are willing to go out and engage in things like restaurants and uh, uh, a little bit higher for shopping. This pandemic and, and the response to it has had a, a huge economic impact. We've seen um, unemployment claims skyrocket in Wisconsin, as we have seen in other places around the country. Looking at our poll data, Charles, how are we seeing that reflected in, in how people are answering? Are they feeling this very personally? Yes, they are. Uh, 15% say they themselves have lost a job uh, due to the coronavirus. Uh, that's up in the 33% range for people who someone in their family has lost a position. Those are up a little bit from a month ago, so the economic damage to jobs has continued to grow. We've also seen work hours cut back. Uh, about 25 or 26% say they've had hours reduced. More than that have had someone in their family with reduced hours. That one didn't grow as much from March to May, but the job losses did increment uh, from March to May. So we're seeing this continued job loss. And we, of course, see that in unemployment claims here in the state. And we'll see it in the monthly unemployment reports that we start getting um, in the next month or two. And I know one of the things you've been trying to look at uh, uh, is, is whether this is disproportionately affecting some people. Um, it, yeah, go ahead. No, there are big uh, differences by race. African-Americans in particular have been hard hit in terms of health consequences of the pandemic outbreak, um, suffering disproportionate numbers of illnesses and deaths. But it's also true that when it comes to the economy, they've been especially hard hit. Um, as I said, overall, about 15% have lost a job, but for African-Americans, it's about 30% who say that they themselves have lost a job. And more than that, if you include their family members. Um, Hispanics and Latinos uh, are between the job losses of African-Americans and of whites, but also are significantly affected. And, and among the white population, 11% say they've lost jobs. So there are economic consequences across all racial groups, but they are especially tough on black people. We also can see it in the financial situation people find themselves in. Back in January and February, just 10% of blacks said that their financial situation was just struggling to get by. But this month, it's 25% who say the same uh, among African Americans. So that's the consequence of these job losses. Um, these are consequences that we will see going forward. And of course, there are consequences that disproportionately affect not only Blacks, but also affect uh, the city of Milwaukee and the Milwaukee region too. Let's talk a little bit about the political realities here. And, and, and by that, I mean how people feel Governor Evers has been handling the, uh, the pandemic, uh, how they feel President Trump has been handling the pandemic, and what that may mean for their general job approval ratings. Let's start with the governor first, Charles. In terms of the governor, his job approval handling the virus is 64%. That's quite good, but it's down from 76% a month ago or six weeks ago. Uh, likewise, his overall job approval is at 59% this month. That's down from about 65% six weeks ago. So you've seen some declines they are still very solid majorities by all the normal metrics, uh, and they're considerably higher than where he was before the epidemic broke out. But the same polarization we were seeing in what we should do in terms of closures is also beginning to show itself in Evers job approval. Solid majorities, over 60% of Republicans approved of his handling of the outbreak back in March. It's now under 50% that do so now. How do people feel about the way the president has been handling the uh, coronavirus uh, virus issue? His job approval has also fallen in terms of handling the virus. He was at 51% approval in March. That's down to 44% this month, 
with 51% disapproving this month. So basically a reversal over those two. It hasn't had as big effect an effect on his overall approval, which has fallen just one percentage point. He was at 48 approved, 49 disapproved in March. He's at 47, 48, uh, 49, I mean, this month. So one point down, that's well inside the margin of error. And this is something we've long seen that his overall job approval has barely moved over the last five months or so. But his handling of this coronavirus outbreak looks much more malleable and has dropped off a good bit more in the in the time since March. We, of course, are in an election year. And, and I guess at this point, we assume that uh, President Trump and uh, uh, Joe Biden, the former vice president, will be the nominees for the major parties. Um, we did a head-to-head matchup with them. How did they fare in this month's poll? Yeah, this time it was Biden at 46, Trump at 43. That's the same margin as it was last month in March, or I should say in March when it was 48, 45. Both of them dropped just slightly, don't knows went up just slightly. All of this is margin of error kind of differences. We've seen Biden with leads of about three points in most of our polling since November. Uh, Trump has been ahead in one poll, but Biden has had these small but inside the margin of error different leads. Uh, Those have not been trending up or down in the last few months. And a final question, Charles, we are in election year and there's a a push on the part of some for more voting by mail, not knowing exactly what the, the health situation will be come the end of the year. How do people feel about the notion of voting by mail, something we saw a lot of in Wisconsin in the April election? Yeah, this is a little bit split. 36% say they would like to see us move to a completely vote by mail system for November. But 57% say it's important to keep voting in person as an option as long as people, as they do now, have the alternative that they can vote by mail absentee if they wish to. So that's essentially the situation we have today. On the other hand, when we ask people how they will vote in November, 54% say they'll either do it by mail absentee or by early vote, just 39% say that they'll do it in person. And so there is more of a reluctance to themselves vote in person, whereas there's more support for keeping in-person voting as the, uh, you know, one option, but with absentee by mail as another alternative. So this is the uh, overview uh, of the poll results. Uh, where can we find all the details? You can find all the juicy details at law. Marquette.edu slash poll. That'll take you to the press release with all the details. But at the top of that page, you'll see a little tiny tab that says uh, results and data. And if you click on that, you'll see the entire questionnaire, the results of every single item, cross tabs, and just more joy than any human should be allowed to have. (laughs) All right. Charles, always great to talk to you. Thanks very much for being with us. And we'll see everybody next time on the issues. Thank you, Mike.